turn this to here. All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to World History One. Let's roll call here this morning. Uh, Marcos, here. All right, there you are. Yep, Chloe, and there you are. Uh, I see you, Ashlyn. Uh, Kaylee, Kaylee, are you here? Uh, your video's off. Kaylee, can you turn that on? Yes, yes, I'm here. Sorry, I just woke up. Sorry. Wow, you just woke up. This is an 11 a.m. class period. Because I just started a new job. I'm the education intern at the Edmund Historical Society and Museum, and I'm really tired. Well, you know, I understand, uh, and that's exciting news, but I know remote learning is hard and it's been a challenge to be on Zoom, but we do have to protect ourselves from COVID-19. You know, these are not normal times, and I know the routines of being online in Zoom classrooms can be hard for us to focus, but it's also not the first time uh, that a worldwide disease outbreak has uh, created a shift in how we do education, so keep that in mind. Wait a minute. If this isn't the first disease, then what did we do back then for school? Did they just shut down school and then they didn't have to learn anything? <laughs> Lucky dogs. Okay, scholars, so we have a problem. The Spanish flu is getting very, very bad. Our school is going to need to shut down. Why, who can tell me a little bit about this flu? Yes, it is very bad. We're going to need to shut down. In fact, we're going to need to wear masks as long as we have the Spanish flu. And yes, this will be the only way that we can have be protected from the germs. Until this goes away, we must close our school. So no school, no learning, we just get to have fun? Yay! I'm gonna find a way to keep teaching you. We certainly can't have you remain uneducated because of the Spanish flu. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. They didn't have internet back then, much less Zoom. So how would they do remote learning? Well, teachers had to come up with really creative ways to do remote learning. I know, I was just as shocked as you. I thought it was something that we just did now, but it's been something that's been done since the bubonic plague. Oh, let me get that. It's my history teacher trying to teach a lesson over the phone. So the Civil War happened when? Hello students, let's try to learn a history lesson through phones. So, the Civil War was a very decisive war for this nation. Finally, after five years, General Robert E. Lee surrendered. That means the Union, aka the North, won!
We are out here today because we should stay outside to protect ourselves from possibly sharing typhoid fever. For science class today, let's look at the water cycle. So, rain sends drops of water to the ground. That water collects in lakes, like the one we are on, then is evaporated up to the sky to make more rain. We learned from the typhoid fever that staying outside helps stop the spread. So let's go inside our new open air school. It doesn't have walls, so that way we can breathe open, clean air, free of disease. Let's start our math class. Who can tell me how I solve 158 divided by 352? <laughs> Hello, students. We are trying out a fun educational radio show for you guys to learn and still be protected from polio. For English, let's read a section from the poem Annabelle Lee by Edgar Allan Poe. It was many and many a year ago, in a kingdom by the sea, that a maiden lived there who you may know by the name of Annabelle Lee. Okay, let's dissect this. I really hope we can be back in school together soon. They were really creative with the remote learning. That just goes to show you it isn't new. So at least you can know whether you're a student or an adult experiencing Zoom challenges, you can know historically you are not alone. It will get better. Eventually you'll go back to school. Who knows? Maybe you can use this time to grow. During the bubonic plague, Isaac Newton was sent home to his family farm from Cambridge University. And that is when the apple fell on its head. If you can discover that, then what can you discover? At least now we have multiple ways for you to preserve history for future generations. So I urge you, let your voice be heard. Film a TikTok, make a Facebook post, send an audio clip, or even write a paper about your experience in the pandemic and how you got through it. That way we can preserve that for the next pandemic's generation and they can know that they, they weren't alone either.